awe-inspiring nature. After traveling a millennium back in time, I then encountered a strong nation that managed to blossom in unsavory lands. A trip to the triple delight of the Benelux Union. I now go to witness the fruits bestowed upon a people who stayed true to their roots and history. An 11 hour plane ride from Korea takes you to the three small but strong nations of the Benelux Union. Similar yet undeniably unique. Among them is a small village in northeast Luxembourg called Vianden. So small that you don't have room to write the country's name on a world map. Luxembourg has a quaint little city with less than 2,000 inhabitants, Vianden. It's nothing fancy, but the elegant houses on every little street are quite striking. On my way into the village, I see a bust at the head of the bridge into town. The great Victor Hugo was the author of Les Miserables and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. His writings made Vianden famous, so what did he write about it? Standing 443 meters tall, this giant castle seems to own the mountain. Will we find the answer here? Hi. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Ilan. My name is Chris, and I will be your guide for the next time. Let's have a look around this castle. Boiling water or uh, stones. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the machicolation. 재밌네요. 저 위에서 이제 저기 오면은 저 위에서 돌이나 뜨거운 물을 부었대요. About ten centuries ago, this remarkable castle was built for a single noble family. So here you can see a few uh, armors exposed, but they are electric cars. Being inside the castle gives you an idea of life 1,000 years ago. However, this place was once in danger of being lost to decay in time. But there was one voice that cried out for the castle's restoration. It was none other than that of the French writer who'd come to Vianden in exile, Victor Hugo. It is thanks to him we're seeing it today. Victor Hugo가 망명 시절 여기서 3년간 보냈다고 하는데 이 마을이 너무 사랑스러워서 여기서 그 시간을 보냈다고 해요. His name is now on the sign. This is a restaurant Hugo often frequented. Still operating as it did 100 years ago, there are traces of the French writer everywhere. Yes, it was, uh, uh, an original 
You can really get a sense of how much the people here respect him. Everywhere on the road, uh, in Paris, uh, you have also Nota Victor Hugo. Here you have a road Victor Hugo, Tal Victor Hugo, Musée Victor Hugo. He's a very great man. To welcome me, he offers to cook me a special dish. Since it was a favorite of Hugo's, I'm very excited to try it. A European favorite for protein since the olden days, beans are boiled with a special sauce to create a classic Luxembourgish dish. The most important ingredient is the smoked pork. It comes from pigs raised in the Ardennes up north. Je sais à La Rochette, par exemple, dans un hôtel, là, elle a mangé des côtes de grenouille. Ici, elle a mangé des œufs sur le plat, et l'autre jour, elle a mangé ça. Banished from his homeland, Hugo spent 19 years wandering Europe. What sort of solace did he find in this dish? Let's see what it tastes like. The border traversing journey through the Benelux takes me away from Luxembourg and up to Alkmaar in Northwest Holland. About a 30-minute drive from the canals of Amsterdam, Alkmaar also turns out to be filled with waterways. I spotted a gondolier gliding down the canal, his boat stocked with something. It turned out to be cheese. But his wasn't the only cheese-filled boat. Curious as to where all that cheese was going, I decided to follow the procession. He offers me a ride, but his ferry is already quite full. They say this is normal here, but I still feel a little bad. Amidst the crowd's cheers, our gondola departs. I didn't even know where we were going. So, where are we going? I've been going uh, in a little bit in the canal. Yeah. So you are the sailor? Uh, yeah. yeah Every week, Vendors can be seen navigating Alkmaar's canals using gondolas to transport their produce. At last, we arrive at the harbor. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. 
you so yeah, much. You are welcome. Uh, welcome. I, I, will, I will never forget it. The other vendors are busy getting ready. The most famous of Holland's five cheese markets. This one takes place on the edge of town in the Vogplein. <laughs> when you think of the Netherlands, you can't forget its cheese wheels. All made on nearby ranches, this stockpile of cheese is quite a sight. It must be a special day, judging by the merchant's outfits. Cheese market with all of the cheeses. Every Friday is a special day. Every Friday? Yeah. Ah, it's amazing. The those are everything is a cheese, right? Yes, 30,000 kilo of cheese. Wow. So it's, uh, uh, this area is famous for cheese? Yes. Ah. More than 400 years we are selling here the cheese. On More than 400 years. Wow. Akmar's cheese market is famous for preserving its traditional methods, even while other markets modernize. The bell rings to signal the market's opening. First, a careful inspection is made of the cheese's quality. This is also done the traditional way. Usually they give the cheese a few good knocks and smell it. A good cheese makes a light sound, not a heavy or dull thud. Now that the cheese has been examined, what's next? Wij gaan handelen, wij verkopen de kaas. Zij keuren de kaas. Ik koop de kaas. En hij is buying the cheese. Nu is het kaas waar het bijna niet op bekend. Als u vader is zelfs opa, kijk het zo. This is known as the hand clap, through which buyer and seller negotiate a price. Made using all natural milk and no additives. Traditional Dutch cheese is both fragrant and flavorful, and has a nice texture for chewing. You can taste the cheese for free in Alkmaar's market. Cheese from Holland to Switzerland. Heel lekker. Smell the piton. And then it happened. Men started running around with cheese loaded onto a sled shaped cart. These are cheese carriers who work in pairs. With eight wheels of cheese on one cart, they're very heavy. So between the two of them, they have to carry over 100 kilograms. Green and red, these striking primary colored hats originated with the four union guilds of the Middle Ages. It's now time to weigh the cheese. This classic pendulum weight has been used for the past 400 years. Uh, 
Bidding prices are also written by hand, not electronically. At present, the Netherlands produces over 600 million kilograms of cheese a year. Since about 70% of that cheese is exported overseas, Dutch cheese is an important economic staple. Suddenly, the spectators begin laughing. It looks like they've replaced the cheese with children. Is to express thanks to the public for attending their cheese market. With four kids on board, that must be pretty heavy. But these guys have been training with carts of cheese weighing over 100 kilograms. As long as the kids are having fun, they say it's worth it. Now that is ook een een leuke attractie voor de kinderen en de kinderen vinden het erg leuk en dat automatisch komen dus ook ouders met kinderen naar de kaasmarkt. What's this? Despite my refusals, they insist on taking me. Were they graciously saying I was too light? As if I weren't enough, they add another 13 kilogram wheel of cheese. After floating in mid-air, riding on wheels just doesn't compare. Before I know it, I've circled the entire square. Although I felt a little bad for my carriers, I admit I wanted one more ride. Sadly, it's now time to say goodbye. Leaving the cheese festival behind me, I now head to the capital city of Amsterdam. The Netherlands' most famous city is below sea level. Amsterdam was built on a system of dikes to prevent flooding from the sea. These canals redirect water flow and were made through years of blood, sweat and tears. Among them are residences that tell of a fate intertwined with water. These floating houses almost make you feel like you're in Southeast Asia. Serving as actual homes for real people, houseboats are basically boats that have been remodeled. Currently, there are about 2,000 houseboats, which means 2,000 families living on water. We decided to find out by asking Luis to show us her home. Hello. <laughs> Welcome on the boat. Oh, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hello, Korea. Hello. 
Is <laughs> Enter. Your house? This is our house. Yes. So yes. Looks, uh, we live on the boat. This yeah. is an old ship. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And on this ship, there was the used to be it used to be a transportation ship. Yeah. This is our lovely sunny terrace. It's wow, where we sit yes, outside. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. terrace. Later on, you can yeah. have a Coca-Cola there and watch oh, the beautiful wow. uh, view. I was in awe from the moment I walked in. Being a reconstructed boat, the entrance is cramped, but the inside is surprisingly big. So, hello, come in. This is my daughter Bella. Bella, she's 11 years old. Ah, here's the owner. Captain, here's the captain. The captain. Hello. Hi, James. This is Corny. Corny, hello. Five twenty-one. Hi, Corny. Hello. Five twenty-one. And this is Emma, our other daughter. She's 17 years old. Wow. She's almost finishing school. Wow. There's another family member. Like a baby sister. Wow. <laughs> What's your name? Knut. Knut. She or he? It's a she. She. Knut. Knut. Oh, so cute. Luis calls me to the kitchen. Yeah, you have hot water and cold water, and I went to the dishwash, and I go like this, and I. <laughs> Just like in a real yeah, house, you yeah, see, yeah, yeah. From the outside, it looks like a boat. But it has everything a house has. Water, gas, electricity. Nothing's missing. We get all the gas and electricity from the wall. I'll show you later. There's big cables and... When we want to go and sail, we just mm -hmm. unplug and we sail. Everything. Yeah. It may be a house, but it can also sail. How? Here's my uh, water and my uh, power. It gaat niet schommelen. Maar ik zelf merk het. Registered with the city as an official house, they get all their utilities through these lines. But there is one difference between their boat and other houses. And then you have a light place. But we are only going to go to the work. So that is only once in five years. These homes that double as boats first showed up right after World War II, when residents who couldn't afford homes began flocking onto boats. However, now they have become priceless symbols of Amsterdam's unique canal layout. Goni and Luis first converted this boat as students. All their kids have grown up here. Wow, what's this? Yeah. This is the boat. I started ah. building. Ah. Ah. This bed? This boat? Yeah. This is <laughs> So and then I started building and making windows and making a roof and then mm. isolation and then the, the mm. system of all the uh, electricity mm. and, the, and the, the heating system mm. and all that stuff. And wow. then after that, the, the carpeting. There isn't a spot he hasn't retouched. Here was an engine, a big engine like yeah. this. This yeah. was all uh, machinery. The former engine room is now occupied by their son, whom I didn't meet today. So who lives in the old sailors' quarters next door? Now it's my, my daughter's room, and there's my daughter, she's coming. This is the room of Emma, the eldest daughter. This is my room, and um, I have a toilet here. Small. <laughs> I've and you own it. Yes, very nice. Yes. Oh, very nice. And um, this is where I sleep. Uh -huh. And you can just like this. Uh -huh. As Emma shows us around, 
You can feel how much she loves her room. I think it's different than a house, and most people live in a house, and I'm different because I'm I live on a ship, and um, I think it's nice because it's in the water, and I uh, I like it very much. At the very front of the boat is little Bella's room. This is my personal favorite. Wow. And here are the windows, and then I go out of the windows. Ta -da! <laughs> Is there a better view than this? Although she grew up in the city, I can see why Bella isn't like other city kids. She's sweet and innocent. <laughs> It looks like she has more to show us. From uh, my father oh. and yeah, from us. Mm -hmm. What was once the deck of the ship is now a lovely terrace for relaxing family time. Are you want to go? Really? Want to go up here? You can even say hi to passing neighbors, really making this the perfect place to live. Before I know it, it's time to say goodbye. I hope we can meet again. Well, the black fairy in Korea, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, that would be so interesting. Bye. A house on water, where my time was short but meaningful. Now I see Amsterdam not as a place fighting the water, but as a place that's more beautiful because of it. To see more of this water route country, I head to its southern tip, to the sound of Lunen. Yes. Oh. I heard in this area. One, two, the third house. <laughs> yes, clump, look. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the Netherlands really does have wooden shoes. There's a clog hanging on the wall. A full, full board. Yeah. <laughs> He's reusing an old clog. <laughs> this Klompen master never throws a clog away. You can tell he's really passionate about traditional clogs, so I'm excited to see his workshop. Yeah. You're making shoes here? Yeah. yeah. Inside is a vast collection of clogs, from big ones to small ones, of all different shapes, all made by Carol himself. Not only that, but they're all handmade, no machines. Yeah, everything is uh, made by wood. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 y
나무로 다 조각해서 만드셔서 Dutch clocks go back over 600 years. Always dealing with water and muddy ground, farmers wore these wooden shoes to block out the moisture. I hold it up because I can under the family bestanders. Yeah. Because now the crop is even here more machinal, maybe made, but it doesn't make any sense. No. But the passion of the crop is also the tradition that comes from the family. But I think in Netherlands is also the culture of the crop maker. If money had been his only goal, he couldn't have acquired the skills he's about to show us. And it would is not, eh? It's not. Because they're made for walking on muddy ground, only moisture-resistant poplar wood is used. From acquiring the materials to carving, trimming, and drawing, it is a grueling process. However, the reason he continues his craft is to provide quality clogs for Dutch farmers who still need them. I do the making, my uh, one, one, okay, here one, this one, my father, my father, my, my, yeah, my father, my grandfather, my grandfather, wow, and there, here, four. Passed down from generation to generation, Karel learned his trade from his father. I five, five, ah. one, two, three, four, oh. and five, not, not oh. The history of Holland's cultivation in black and white gives me an idea of why he insists on continuing his trade. <laughs> Carl picked these out for me personally. These are shoes that carry on a tradition going back hundreds of years. <laughs> we cherish their role in making rough lands blossom by dancing in them. Majestic nature, the history of a millennium spent in harmony with it, and the warm smiles of its people. This has been the Benelux Union, a cooperative united in happiness. Shut up.